It's hard to believe, but it's been more than a month since Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency in California to help the state deal with the coronavirus, and our whole world changed. Now, people are developing coping skills, learning to work from home, teaching their children themselves, and finding ways to kill the boredom from being housebound. But as some things become more routine, other obstacles become more challenging. How will we pay our bills, our rent, our mortgage? When will we ever get back to work and our kids to school? These are the everyday questions we have to all face going forward, but we hope we have a few answers. Fox 11 News In Depth starts right now. Hello, everyone. I'm Hal Eisner. Welcome to the Fox 11 News In Depth and, and to my home office, because this is where I've been working for more than a couple of weeks now. And, and we're doing our show from home and we're using Zoom technology to talk to our guests. And, you know, when, when we talk about this pandemic, we talk mostly about our concerns with regard to the medical aspects of it. But really, we can't overlook the economic impact of all of this. And Congresswoman Norma Torres is with us to talk about some of that. You know, Congresswoman, first of all, let me just ask you this. How are you? How is your family? I'm doing great. How under the circumstances of having, you know, to be at home 24-7, uh, we're, we're, we're hanging in there. We've had a little issue with my grandson um, that was running a fever for a few days, but I think that we're over that rough patch right now. Well, we've all been touched in some way or another. We certainly know people, many of us who have got this. We've also maybe known people who have passed away. It's been a very challenging thing. And, and you know, I, I want to talk about this $2 trillion uh, emergency relief bill. It's called the CARES Act, uh, which stands for Coronavirus something or another. And it, it's a good acronym, though, because CARES is easy to remember. And it, it helps out mostly families and businesses. And I want to talk about that for just a moment. But first, tell me about the schools. I want to know what you think of what Governor uh, Newsom said this week about we should not plan on going back to school this year. However, what we should think about is distance learning, that we, we do school distance learning for the rest of the school year. What's your reaction to that? So uh, the governor, I, I truly believe that is trying to do the best for Californians right now. We have to flatten the line and we have to beat this, uh, this virus. And the one way that we know how to do that is by maintaining our social distancing. However, that's easier said than done. Uh, our parents, you know, some of the best parents that I know are, are just, you know, besides themselves, trying to deal with day-to-day -day activities and keeping their children busy. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is the fact that so many of our children have been disconnected, have not checked in with their schools, are not picking up meals, um, and are uh, simply have disappeared. Those kids are, you know, the most vulnerable kids in our communities, and and they may not have access to um, internet. Their parents may not know may not know that uh, currently. We have some internet providers that are providing, you know, a free uh, three month trial uh, for internet services. However, the challenge there is that you still have to have a credit card in order to sign up for this service. So there are many, many challenges that I think that the governor um, will hopefully address in the very, very near future. We just simply cannot keep kids out of school without providing them the tools at home that they need and the competency of, uh, of instructors at home that they need in order to be successful. Congresswoman, you're on the House Appropriations Committee. You were involved in this entire $2 trillion package. I, I know I checked in with uh, some of your aides last week. They told me how busy you were. But what I'd like to know from you is what will this do to help people in small businesses? Like, like we said earlier, there people are losing their jobs. Uh, businesses are sinking, uh, albeit temporarily. What are you going to be able to do with this bill? Yeah, with this bill is so important. And I think the name itself uh, really is a telling story that, you know, the government does care about our, our economy, about, you know, day-to-day -day hardships of average Americans across uh, the United States. The bill targets uh, individual businesses and gives them money in their hands, the availability to be able to uh, apply for grants and apply for forgivable loans as long as they continue to keep their employees employed. Um, as long as people continue to stay on their payroll, they, those loans will be forgiven. And also, it provides unemployment insurance 
uh, for our workers. And for the very first time, we are looking at at workers in this economy, the gig economy, uh, workers that um, receive a W uh, a W nine instead of you know they're not necessarily attached to one company, but they're contract workers. They will be able to apply for uninsurance benefits and receive an extra six hundred dollars that is directed um, to put hands uh, to put money in their hands so they can buy the groceries that they need, so they can provide for their families as well as. Um, homeless uh, shelters that we know that our homeless shelters are right now in the front lines dealing with, you know, some some uh, uh, folks in our community that are very very fragile and uh, are the potential first targets of this uh, coronavirus. We talk about these small businesses, Congresswoman, and we, we we've heard the stories. We've heard how scared people are. I want you to listen to a, a couple of folks here, and then we'll discuss. And I'm also worried about how the businesses will survive. Um, we've had to basically change our business plan and business models completely. And so it's just like starting a, a brand new business. My income is zero for the rest of the month. And zero for the rest of the month is pretty scary to think about. I, I want to get a final thought from you, Congresswoman. I also want to point out that you you've set up your website, uh, torres.house.gov, uh, and, and click stay informed on the website. You you've done that to try to give people as much information as possible. What do you say to folks who are feeling exactly like those people we just heard? I want to reassure them that we are working every single day. I mean, in the last two weeks, my staff and I have logged well over a thousand hours in less than two weeks working to keep our, our communities informed. And your business may not have any customers right now, but I want to reassure you that we will beat this virus, that we our economy will return, and that our communities are going to be much stronger and much better for it. So hang in there for a little bit. Uh, go to my website, call my office and we will help walk you through the process of applying for the grants that you need but thank you for doing the right thing to try and trying to keep our employees on the payroll we will keep checking in with you congresswoman to see how things are going stay healthy stay safe you and your family and coming up next on